we get rolling on more than just wheels. You're replacing these gears anyhow? Go ahead and do that so you don't run into an issue in the future. Take a look at a 50-foot box that gets a new life and gets super clean as we go over this SD9 that we overhauled to become an SD10 in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Uh, when we're replacing gears on Proto 2000 units in particular, uh, if you ever have a locomotive that skips, it pops, it stalls, it doesn't work, there's something with its uh, drivetrain, start with that gear. If it's an early Proto 2000 or any Proto 2000, it seems that that is an issue, uh, and it's actually the gear itself that uh, it cracks straight across, and the locomotive will either pop, pop, or even to stop completely if uh, you haven't replaced these. So what I actually use is um, Athern SD4-2 set. If you buy two packs of these, you'll be able to do three, four axle units. They're SD4-2 um, replacement gears. I put them on, and when you do so, you actually wanna make sure that when you slide these together, you don't let the actual axle touch inside or you're gonna have a short. Now this is an actual Walther's GP20. We had this locomotive sitting on the uh, a spur it shorted, couldn't figure out why. I went right to the axles, found out that one of the axles is touching. So if you're doing any of your proto units, or if you have a locomotive that has a short, start in that location possibly first to see if that is what has caused your issue. If you've slid the gears or if you've done work on an engine and put them together too tight, um, there's gonna be a problem. So what I've done is I actually take washers, they're little spacer washers from KD, and they usually would be used for uh, car heights. If you're gonna adjust car height or use it for insulating, I'm going to use it for insulating, but not in its full form. I actually take the scissors and I nip off just a little piece of the actual washer. So it's left me now with just this little red fleck. And what I do is I drop this down into the gear. So it's sitting down in there. I use a toothpick to make sure that it's sitting flat. I can see it down in there. It's going to be tough for you to be able to see, but trust me, it's laying flat in there. Now I'm able to slide this in, squeeze them together. Now I can check my width on these, and you want to get yourself an NMRA standard gauge. If you do not have one, well worth the money. See if you can locate it online um, or your local hobby shop. Totally worth having. I'm just checking the actual wheel alignment, and it is spot on. When you drop that little piece in, you can almost squeeze it together just nice and snug, making sure that you're centered on your, uh, the actual is actually centered right here, so the gear is in the middle. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a nice way to insulate your wheels, Make sure you don't have a short. If you're replacing a lot of GP20s, GP30s, or any proto units, you're replacing these gears anyhow, go ahead and do that so you don't run into an issue in the future. I just want to show you a real quick tip on how to take a freight car. Maybe you purchased online or purchased at a show and the weathering might have been a little bit aggressive and you want to be able to lighten that up. I use a very mild detergent. This is called Super Clean. I picked it up in the automotive department at Walmart. Uh, this whole gallon was around like 10, 12 bucks. Uh, it's more than you need. They do have smaller containers, so go ahead and get that if that uh, that helps you. But what I do is actually just dip it into the solution and uh, I just massage it over the, the letters of the cars. If you get the car completely saturated. Let it work on the dull coat or um, chalk weathering that might have been applied to the car. In this case it was both. It was dull coated after it had been chalk weathered and um, I can't really quite see it as well maybe in the uh, in the image here but I actually just massage it over the top and you really start to clean off. You can see there's some brown actually building up uh, in the brush and in the bubbles. So as you go through, I'm gonna clean this entire car up. I wanna just re-weather it a little bit differently. Um, it's actually dated 1972, and obviously I'm modeling the 80s, so I'm gonna do some uh, modifications to it to bring it up to uh, the standards that I want for 1985. But at the end of the day, this is what the car looks like. Uh, I've already cleaned this whole side, and it looks like a brand new car. So that's just one way to be able to take a car that you might see online or even at a show that might not quite be uh, weathered the way you might like it and you can just start over clean off the application that already been applied and it's not aggressive and it's not uh, marring or spreading or affecting the paint below this is a moloko car uh, i believe that's how it's pronounced it's moloko mo lo ko moloko he does a fantastic job on his cars the details on these are insane they look fantastic but i'm able to weather and run the brush around them and none of them are popping off this one I purchased without this stirrup, um, but they they stick and they work fantastic. I have the stirrup, it's in the box. The, the seller actually provided that, so it was nice. 
Um, but again, this is just a tip for you to be able to update maybe an overly wily car that you might have done or one you might pick up at a show. Milwaukee Road SD10, number 532. Now I picked 532 because I actually have the number boards off of 532 that I purchased at a flea market uh, a number of years ago. But with that said, I thought it'd be cool to pay homage to it in uh, scale form. Now what we're going to need to do to this particular unit is we're going to need to chop the nose. I'm going to add a couple exhaust stacks. I'm going to add the horse air filter, move these horns. I'm going to add a beacon. And uh, one of the biggest things that you have to do is actually take out this tank. Now, before we get to that, I want to just take a look at what, what details I'm using. And one of them, like I said, doing the beacon, using a Details West RB106. I'm going to put some class lights in it. This is uh, Detail Associates number 1019. I'm going to put in uh, the winterization windows. I need to uh, replace one of the dual headlights. And then, of course, the exhaust stacks that I mentioned. Now, I need to still uh, select and get a horse air filter to be able to replace and put that on top as well as a winterization hatch. And um, that being said, the biggest thing, as I mentioned prior, was actually knocking out this tank. You look at it and it's like, how do you mill that thing out and be able to get it all taken apart? Well, the beauty of it is, this is a Broadway Limited blue line. Both the Blue Line and the Paragon series both can have the uh, tanks removed. The speakers are actually located down here. So the beauty of that is if you want to chop it out, boom, you chop it out just like that. If you look at the tank, notice there. I've got it through. I think you can see the re-railers hanging there. But I've actually cut it out. Now, I ended up cutting out this much of the tank. Notice that it's hollow. A lot easier to cut out. They're actually screwed on. There's four screws that hold the tank on. I dropped that thing off. I've obviously cut it off and I made my modification. I added a brass plate to cover up the open side of the tank underneath and that gives me the look that I'm, uh, that I'm looking for. So as I mentioned before, it's pretty difficult to make that tank, that hollowed out area. There's nothing under there to be able to deal with. Now, Milwaukee Road actually did have these particular um, air reservoirs or air tanks. They're sitting the other direction. They're actually sitting... Uh, one behind the other instead of one over the other. So with that said, this particular unit, once I drop that off, that detail can be turned sideways. I'll rework the piping and whatnot. But that's really going to give me a good way to get into an SD10 and uh, minimize having to grind out and try to figure out how do I do that without seeing the motor underneath because Broadway Limited has the motor elevated enough. The speaker that's in here was moved into the cab. Uh, it ended up being a pretty simple modification. So if you're looking at doing an SD10, this might be one way to do it. Uh, this is number 2381, which is the only SD9 that the Sioux line had. And I thought, since it's the only one they had, it was well worth modifying and uh, modeling at Nacho scale. So look for the future uh, chopped SD10. Uh, this is going to get behind the GP9s. There's a few other projects, obviously, along the way. We might not get to this one right away, but if anybody's thinking about doing it, save yourself a little bit of time and chop it up by being able to modify a tank just like this one here. So hopefully you enjoy seeing how these turn out. Be sure and hit the like button. You can click here to subscribe. You can also check out other episodes of Sue the Milwaukee Road as well as take the tour of the GN 1970.